Darth Bane. Who in the heck is he? No, I'm just kidding. Some of you may know already, but by golly, we've got special guests with us today. It's Nerdery and Murdery, and by golly, let the shenanigans begin here on Two Geeks and a Microphone. Welcome to the Two Geeks in a Microphone podcast, your one-stop shop for television, movie, video games, comic books, book reviews, and more. Now, without further ado, here's Stephen and Mike. Who goes first? You go first. I go first. Wait. Who goes first? Who goes first? You go first. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Two Geeks and a Microphone. I am your co-host, Mr. Stephen Boster, along with the one, the only, Mr. Michael Shakes. Mike, say hey to everybody. Good morning to all you geeks out there in geekdom land. Sorry, I was uh, late on the uptake there. I'm, I was excited and I was geeking out to our music and I just forgot to do our little. <laughs> well, I'll be open with you guys. I am geeking out about our guest today with the nerdery and murdery crossover. Mike, who do we have with us for those who may not know our good friends, nerdery and murdery? We have the court jesters of nerds and murds in the house. <laughs> Jeff and Zig of Nerdery and Murdery. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks for having us. Uh, this is number three for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Glad awesome. to be back here. Good yeah. to have be here for y'all to join us for the ups, the downs, the goods, the bads, the highs, and the lows, and the nerd and the murd. <laughs> I love it when he says that. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, my goodness. Well, everybody, we so appreciate you joining us this morning and uh, very excited about how things are going to roll out because uh, always with Jeff and Zig, it is a party. So welcome to the fray, everybody. <laughs> what up? It's the first time, first time we're live. Yes. yes we're oh, yeah. Gonna... This would be you guys' first yeah, time. We well, go live. well, okay. First time live on the web because we actually did a live show yeah. for uh, number 50 where we had a live audience, which yeah. was, man, that was nerve wracking. Uh, he was so good, though. He was so good. Oh, oh you guys did great. I, I listened Thanks. to that episode. You, did, you guys did a fantastic job. <laughs> there were a bunch of inside jokes that went on for 45 minutes we didn't get. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's yeah. okay. All right, well, let's roll into our news real quick. Um, I got one item for the news. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Stephen, I cut you off there. Oh, uh, it's all good. All right. Uh, I, I what else is new? Ah, okay. with you. Fair, with you. fair. <laughs> that was fair. Um, I, what do you I mean you interrupted? Okay. I'm messing with you. I'm get messing it, with you. Get it, get it. Everybody, I'm honoring this morning because I'm going on like a little sleep. So woohoo, welcome to caffeine. And, and okay. I'm trying to be patient. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wasn't gonna have any any news, but unfortunately, uh we had a iconic actor who just passed away. So I wanted to share this. I did share it on Facebook, but I wanted to share it on the air. So Richard Mull, who is better known as Bull Shannon from Night yeah. Court. Um, Night Court was one of my all-time favorite television shows growing up. I love that show. And Bull was such a funny character. He was great, staple to the show, amazing. And he passed away on January or January, October 26th. That would have been Thursday, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um 80 Bull, years old. Yep, he was 80 years old. Wow. Um Bull was also the voice of Two Face on the Batman animated series. And I had actually forgot about that till my brother-in-law reminded me on Facebook. So thank you, Roger, for that reminder. And yes, he was fantastic because yeah. Two-Face. So we lost another Batman animated actor and that just makes me sad. So, so I wanted to share that. 
That's all I got for the. Don't geek. forget, he was also the bad guy in uh, Dragon Slayer. He was the bad He's guy in a lot of things. Uh, oh he was, yeah, he was the bad guy in Buck Rogers. Oh yeah, <gasps> was he really? Yep, yep. One episode. Oh my gosh. Boy, it's been Whoa. so long since I watched Buck Rogers. And you guys covered Buck Rogers on your show too, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> nice little plug for you guys. And, Thank you. Um, also, I I've got my. Murdery and Murdery mug right here with awesome. me this morning. Thank you, sir. Um, I, I'm not drinking out of it this morning because I'm drinking iced coffee because I find iced coffee stays colder longer than hot coffee stays hot. So. <laughs> 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 it's easier to keep during the show. So, <laughs> so. Um, all right. Well, that's all the geeky news I have. I'm going to move on to Geek Dar if you guys are ready for that. Throw with the radar, sir. What's wrong with you? I've lost the bleeps, I've lost the sweeps, and I've lost the creeps. The what? The what? And the what? You know. The bleeps. <laughs> the sweeps. <laughs> and the creeps. <laughs> That's not all he's lost. Yeah, and we've definitely lost it today since we've got extras with us. <laughs> 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 um. I have one thing for the Geek Dar. Um, and again, as usual, it is a comic book, but it is not a new comic book. I was at the flea market last uh, last weekend. We have a flea market here in Belleville every month, and I try to go just about every month. And I look for generally Star Wars action figures is what I'm mostly looking for. But I sometimes peruse comic books, and I just found this amazing cover that I had to buy and it is the incredible Hulk. And I don't know how much you can see there, but uh, it is the Hulk and he is battling Wolverine, the <gasps> thing and abomination. Oh, wow. All on the Good cover. God. Whoa. I think he's going to try to show it to you without the green screen. So yeah. Nice. Yeah. Ooh. And I, uh, I haven't read it yet. Um, but I just saw the cover and I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to get that. <laughs> That's cool. Um, I did look at the uh, uh, published date and it's from 1989, the year I graduated, by the way. Me too. Me too. Oh, nice. Yeah. We're all 89ers. What? Not 91. Zig. Zig's uh, the young one in the house. <laughs> <laughs> He's the youngster. We're all the, the old guys. <laughs> Yeah, he and I actually met in high school when I almost beat him up. That's right. Oh. And then we met again like five years later. <laughs> wow, I would not have imagined that, Jeff. Yeah, it, it it was funny, and it was just being young and stupid, and then we met years later at a party, and, and <laughs> been best friends ever since. <laughs> <laughs> so get this. Awesome. He's He's telling the story about going, because he was from a different high school, going around my high school, running into people. And I'm in the kitchen of our friend's house, and I dropped what I was working on. I think I was making coffee or something. Turned around and went, that was you? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Everybody died. <laughs> awesome. Nice. So we got a little inside info about nerdery and murdery. Yep. I like it. That's yep. awesome. That's awesome. Well, Stephen and I have known each other since we were in high school too, and mm -hmm. uh, we actually met through church. Yep. Yeah, I guess um, it was the the fall of eighty seven. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, your dad was one of the ministers at uh, First Baptist Church of O'Fallon. Yeah. And yeah, we met, and we've been great friends ever since. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this guy with spiked hair, long hair, almost the, the 80s mullet comes up to me in a striper t-shirt. And and I was like, he was like, hey, let's go do something. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I was new at driving back then. I think we kind of got lost and ended up in East St. Louis, which is not a great place to end at up. Night. <laughs> at night. <laughs> <laughs> So we've had some goofy adventures, yeah, um, but well. yeah, so two of us have been friends since high school also. So that's, that's cool news. Very cool. Um, anyone else got anything to share for the geek door? Uh, I finally finished Andor. Um, okay. Nice. Uh, All right. uh, that was hard to get through. <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> that was hard to get through. And then follow that up with uh, Miss Marvel, uh, which was decent. Not bad. I have okay. not seen Miss Marvel. I, Angie loved it, though, right? Didn't. Yes, Angie. Well, <clears throat> she she kind of had this love hate relationship with it. But uh, I think overall, she really liked it. Yeah, with the the Marvels movie coming up, I wanted to watch that, so we gotcha. we, we got through that. They, uh, like I said, it was okay. They 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 center some of the story in the partition yeah. of India, which is something that nobody ever talks about. I mean, yeah. um, they even did a Doctor Who episode about that a couple of years ago too. So hmm. Oh, a little forgotten piece of history that you know affected millions of people, and we just you know, so it was cool. Just <laughs> right, right. Huh. Interesting. Okay. I did not know that. All right. Um, so if any, if no one has any other geek dar, I guess we'll move on to the main event. It's time for the main event. All right. Da, 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 da. Well, first off, real quick, I want to give a shout out to Sage Page Omega. Sage is watching through us through uh, over on Twitch. Sage, good to see you. I love awesome. it. He's, Sage he says, in the house. great guy. He says, uh, geeks and nerds in one room. As a dweeb, I approve this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we love Sage. He's got his own Twitch channel. Uh, mm -hmm. He is a uh, gaming streamer. So if you like to play games and such, go check out uh, Sage's page on on Twitch. Um, and he's quite talented too. <laughs> yes, and Sage has joined us for an episode in the past. We did an episode with on the Sandman on the Sandman series with Sage. So mm -hmm. thank you to Sage for that one. You know, um, speaking, speaking of video games, I just found out yesterday, and I don't I don't even remember what popped into my head that it made me look for this, but you can get Starship Titanic on Steam. Starship Titanic. Yes. Oh, the, yeah. The, the Douglas, Douglas Adams. Adams. Yes, the Douglas Adams video game. Oh, a little video game. Wow. Huh. Cool. So I may have to buy that and play it. There you go. Cool. Since I, ne since I never finished it. <laughs> I, don't think <laughs> I think it's like the guy, the guide game. You, you get a T-shirt on how far you went. Yeah, it's hard. Right. Right. I'm sure John Douglas Adams is Adam the is involved. It's yeah, it's going to be hard. Yeah, is the answer 42? <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> 42 better be in it somewhere. <laughs> I'd be super disappointed if it wasn't. <laughs> All right, so today we are discussing the Dark Lord of the Sith, Darth Bane. Um. I got some notes, but I'm hoping I don't trample on Zig's notes for his. Uh, his yeah, no, no, no. I just I, okay. I, I gathered some stuff from Wikipedia and some other sources. Just please go ahead. OK, <laughs> OK. Um, so Darth Bane is a prominent character in the Star Wars expanded universe, specifically in the Darth Bane trilogy of novels written by Drew Carpatian. Carpatian. I'm not sure how I pronounce his name correctly. I think you got it. Um, yeah. One and, of those uh, is right. I actually reached out to him to have him on the show, I think a year or two ago. Um, he did get back with me, but unfortunately, the company that he's working for had put out like a, a media blackout. So he wasn't allowed to do podcasts at the time. So, oh, wow. And, and I just haven't reached out to him. So, anyway, <laughs> um, he is known for establishing the rule of two, a Sith doctrine that there should only be a master and a pre an apprentice at any given time to ensure the survival and growth of the Sith order. Bane believed that by limiting their numbers, the Sith could become more powerful through secrecy and constant pursuit of, of strength. Darth Bane's story begins with the old Republic era where he, he was originally a miner named Dr Dessel. He later discovered his force sensitivity and became a Sith under the Tutelage of Darth Raven and Darth Zena. I don't know if that's correct. I, 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 we'll, 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 dis yeah, we'll discuss that. Yeah, I don't believe so. Because um, I just re-listened to the book. Sorry. <laughs> I should have corrected that. <laughs> um, after, becoming a delu after becoming delusion with the chaotic Sith way of the time, 
Bane reformed the Sith Order, which ultimately tied to the rule of two. His characters and his character and teachings have ha- had a significant influence on the Star Wars expanded universe, including Sith. Sith. You can do it. You can. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the encouragement. Uh, philosophy seen in later films and media. However, please note that my knowledge. Oh, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so yeah, I re-listened to Darth Bane the audiobook this week. Um, I went back and listened to a couple podcasts and stuff. Um, Darth Bane began as a miner on a on a planet called a Pathros, um, where he and his father were both miners. They're practically slaves on, on the planet. Yep. Um, and Bane was uh our, our Dezel, or as he was known there as Dez. Most people called him Dez. Um, Des was picked on by all the other miners and Des had to get really tough because of that. Well, and not only, not only that, his father blamed him for the death of his mother and childbirth. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he had a hard time that way too. And his father basically named him because his father said that he was Des was the bane of his existence. Yes. Uh, that's where the name Bane comes from. And uh later uh uh Des just embraces that name. When when he takes on his Sith name, he, he just embraces the Bane title mm-hmm. and becomes well, at that point he becomes Lord uh Sith Lord Bane because they weren't using the Darth titles at the at the time. So um, but yeah, so he starts out on, on the mining planet of a Uh um, there he gets into some trouble with the, with the, uh, old Republic and, um, has to go on the run. He joins a military and he starts learning all these military, st- uh, strategic, you know, skills and, and, and he just becomes more, you know, uh, knowledgeable, powerful and, and so on and so forth through that. And then he is picked up by a Sith Lord at that point, and he is taken into the Sith Academy. On Korriban. So, on Korriban, exactly. Yes, Jeff did his homework. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good job. I haven't read the book. I mean, I, I re- re-listened to it, you know, last week, um, but I haven't read the book in years. I do have a copy of the original Darth Bane book. And notice oh, it cool. does not have the Legends banner on it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, the Cor- the Corbon scenes are some of my favorite. I loved in the old Republic uh, online role playing game that you got to go to Corbon. Oh, uh, that's for so cool! Missions, which was awesome. Very cool. I have never played that. I mean, I've played some Star Wars role playing, but it's it's been years and years since I played that. And we only played a few campaigns. We didn't play too much. Um, we, we played mainly a, a smuggler campaign, which was really good because it was mm-hmm. kind of based on Han Solo and so on and so forth. But um, but yeah, that'd be really cool to go to to Korriban. I, I'd love that. Yeah, you it know. was neat. Very cool. Well, I I do have my original Darth Bane. Um, unfortunately, I can't find the other two books because there's three books in the series. And I can't find the other two. So they recently have reissued the Darth Bane series and they put them in the Essential Legends collection. See, here I am doing Geek Dar still. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the cover yeah. of the first one. Uh, awesome. Path of Destruction. Really nice cover. They did a good job of this. Yeah. Cool. And then the second one is Dynasty of Evil. And that's where Darth Zana comes in. Zana, Zana, uh, however we pronounce her name. <laughs> and then the final one is uh, Rule of Two. And that's the cover of that one. So, um, oh, wait, wait. I, I have a question. <clears throat> okay. Yes. So, this is purely not Star Wars. This is publishing. So, let me see if I get this right. Oh, wait, Originally, wait. I'm sorry. I did do them out of order. That was book two. And then book three was Dynasty of Evil. Yeah. So originally it was all canon and then it was legends, but now it's select legends. It's going to be canon again, isn't it? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I, okay. Okay. 
Now, as if far Dave as Dave Filoni has anything to say about it, I, I agree. I agree. Well, technically, Darth Bane is still canon. I mean, mm. the character is canon. Yeah. Um, because the character was featured in the Clone Wars because yep. Yoda. Oh uh, yeah. Right. Yoda encounters encounter, the spirit of Darth Bane through a, I, I think, a holocron or something. In the what was it? The Yoda Chronicles, Yoda Files. One of those final episodes uh, of of the the Clone Wars series. So here you go, season thirteen, episode nice. six. Thanks, Jeff's sir. playing Tito. <laughs> and not so, only that, he was voiced by Mark Hamill. Yes, yes. Um, Mark Hamill had made an announcement at one point that he was going to get to voice a character in the Clone Wars, but he 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 didn't want to give it up, and he kept saying. All I can say is it's a very iconic character and everybody's like, well, who could he be? I mean, you know, who, who, who's that iconic that we haven't seen yet. And then it turned out it was Darth Bane, which is fantastic. Of course you would never know, you know, had you not known that it was him, you, you wouldn't know just by hearing the voice. Cause they synthesized it and, you know, oh, yeah. doctored it all up and you would have never known that was Mark Hamill, but, but yeah, so clone wars is canon. So I would say the character of Darth Bane is canon. The stories, however, I think are still considered quote unquote legends. So, um, and sorry, I said season 13. It was season six, episode 13. I had, uh, I had that backwards. That's fine. No problem. No problem. So yeah. Uh, so Darth Bane, um, uh, forgot where I was at. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. That's all right. That's all right. Um, so yeah, Darth Bane then goes on to the Sith Academy, which I love the idea that the Sith pretty much had identical to what the Jedi had, you know, because the Jedi had their Academy and everything. And Darth Bane, through going through the Academy, realized that this isn't working. This yeah. is not this is not what the Sith, what the legendary Sith like Darth Revan had imagined for them. And he was going back and getting the holocrons from Darth Revan and, and the different Darths from from the uh, old Republic era and learning from the hologram holo, holocrons more than what he was learning from the Sith Academy, which was pretty awesome. <laughs> You know, I don't know how how true this will be. I mean, you take it with a grain of salt. Um, there's a rumor floating out there that in the uh, the High Republic or the Old Republic series, whichever it is that's coming out, uh, or oh, a- Acolyte, it's uh, for Acolyte. Acolyte. There's a rumor that there will be a Bane cameo, possibly Ken Al Reeves. <gasps> okay what i Maybe have great assault right right i, I um, have heard that keanu reeves has been approached and i've heard that keanu reeves has stated that he he, he would like to be in star wars but i haven't heard anything official so yeah i agree take that with a grain of salt but him is Darth Bane. Cooler if it was oh my gosh <laughs> oh it was reported by giant freaking robot so, <laughs> yeah, so take it with a grain of salt. Sure, sure. But there's always hope, right? Yeah. I mean, come on. Star Wars it's, is built on hope, right? It's a new hope. That's right. Nah, I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So through, uh, through, through the holocrons, Bane learns about the rule of two. He also learns that the Sis used the title Darth and the Academy had done away with the Darth titles. They, they just went to Lord of the Sith. They, they stopped using the Darth titles. They felt that the Darth titles um, were, uh, how do I say it? Uh, more about oneself and less mm-hmm. about the, the group. And supposedly all the Siths were equal, but that was not true at all. <laughs> no. And so they dropped the Darth title, and Bane did not agree with that. 
he yeah, and you saw that during the during the academy scenes uh some of the favoritism they would give to some of the other students and you know bane was mm-hmm. kind of an, kind of an outcast for a lot of them right and there was there was the one i cannot remember her name now um and i just listened to it last week but there was the one character who was kind of training bane and and honestly it almost felt like she was going to be she was darth zana Mm-hmm. But it turned out she wasn't because at the end he kills her. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, oh, OK, well, she's not Darzana. She's not his apprentice. That's for sure. But um, but yeah, she was kind of in with them. But then again, she was siding with Bane. She was kind of playing both sides of the fence. Really interesting character. I actually would like to know more about her. I, I think she'd be kind of cool to see some adventures on her own and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But, I know we'll never get that now. <laughs> that's that's not going to happen. But anyway, so at this point, Darth Bane, uh, he embraces the rule of two um, and decides that he has to destroy the Sith Academy. And he uses what they call a thought bomb. And the thought bomb was actually supposed to be used on the Jedis because they were, you know, at war with the Jedi and the New Republic or the old Republic, I should say. And uh, they, they were uh, going to use the thought bomb on them, but Bane kind of turned it against everyone and pretty much destroys everybody there, period. <laughs> the, yeah. the Sith, the Jedi, everyone, they're all dead. <laughs> <coughs> we're in heaven. <laughs> yeah, right. To quote the actor from from uh, uh, Rogue One, when when he was doing the the media tour for Rogue One, somebody asked him about uh, whether his character dies, and he went, "He did, she did, we all did." <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he now, wasn't allowed to talk anymore by that after that. <laughs> he did. Now he did, maybe he I, said, no. maybe I'm remembering it wrong. I didn't think he set off the thought bomb on Korriban. I thought he did it on a battlefield. Well, yeah, it, it was on a, on a battlefield, but it took out all the Sith there. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So he, he eliminated everyone. I just he, didn't think that was on Korriban, though. Uh, yeah, I can't remember. You might be right. It may not have been on Korriban. It's the Tanuktapun weapon. It's what? It's the Tanuktapun weapon from Larry Niven, from the Protector. I don't know what that is. You'll have oh, okay. to enlighten so, me. Uh, 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 Larry Niven in World of the Tabs. Uh, millions and millions of years ago, uh, this species uh, who could control minds but wasn't very smart was able to control minds of a uh, spacefaring civilization that's enough to find. Oh, it, was, it was the planet Rusan. R-U-U-S-A-N. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. So anyway, uh, they, they enslaved the Tanuktapun, and the Tanuktapun worked for them for years and years and years, centuries, millennia. And eventually the Tanuktapun form a plan to uh, kill everything above a certain amount of sentience. Oh, wow. And set it off across the whole galaxy. Nice. Yeah. It, it, it sounds happened, like the same thing. Yeah. It happened millions of years ago. Wow. Cool. Sorry. That I know nothing about. <laughs> Sorry. I went down a geek rabbit hole. I apologize. Oh, no, no. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If you've that's... never read. Uh, the Protector or World of the Tabs by Larry Niven. Check it out. Okay. It's worth it. Right. You find him at a half price bookstore for a book and a half. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I got to drive an hour away to get to half price books, but <laughs> but I do go for, from time to time because they, they got some great deals. They got awesome bookmarks too for like 50 cents. What, Just amazing. What, what was the name of the book by Larry Niven? Uh, there's a couple. There was uh, World of the Tabs and uh, The Protector. Okay. They both take place in the known space universe. They're great. Very, you, very good. Keep in mind, uh, you will read one or two, and then you will, oh, I need to know more about this, and you'll end up with 20 books. So be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the warning. <laughs> oh, my favorite from Larry Niven, and it's not just him. It's Larry Niven and Jerry Pornell is Inferno. If you've known oh. they're, they're Inferno. Oh, my they gosh. Read that. Dante's Inferno. Nice. And his yeah. guide is Benny. Don't give it away. 
It's 40 years old. Don't you wrote it in the 60s. Away. Spoiler alert, everybody. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoilerific territory. Oh, should I have given the given the spoiler sounder? <laughs> <laughs> it's Benito uh, Mussolini. That's dude. who he is. It was written in the 60s. Come on. Uh, I Seven. love this banter. <laughs> I even said don't give it away and you gave it away. He's terrible at that. I am terrible at that. (laughs) Well, actually, it says it in the uh, Amazon description. Does it? It does. Man, that gives away a major thing in the book. After being thrown out the window of his luxury apartment, science fiction writer Alan Carpentier. Carpentier. uh, wakes up to find himself at the gates of hell feeling he's landed in a great opportunity for a book. He attempts to follow Dante's roadmap. Determined to meet Tate himself, uh, Carpentier treks through the nine layers of hell led by Benito Mussolini and encounters countless mental and physical tortures. As he struggles to escape, he's taken through new puzzling and outlandish versions of sin recast for the present day. Yep. Acclaimed wow. writer pair Larry Niven and Jerry Pornell offer a new twist on Dante's classic tale, Inferno. Yep. It's a great book. Nobody's bought this for a movie. So, so we were actually just talking about this in one of the last episodes we recorded. There's two. There's Inferno, which is based off the video game. Oh, okay. Which is not the same, but one that I just watched just this week um, that you have to watch with subtitles because it's in Korean, Korean is Along with the Gods. And it's oh, about, right. Yes, it's about a firefighter who dies. And goes to hell and has to go through trials there as well. It's really good. I enjoyed it. Visually, it looks neat. I, I I've got it like on my to watch list. Yeah, I watched it. Uh, like I said, you do have to read it with subtitles because it's in Korean. And then there's a part two, uh, the last forty nine days. I think it's called. I just just got into that one. And there's a rumor there's going to be a part three. So yeah, yeah. Along with the gods, the two worlds. And then along with the gods, the last 49 days. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I enjoy, I enjoyed uh, the, the, the two worlds. The visually, it looked like a, like almost like a Zack Snyder style. Yeah. Kind of a thing. Is that fair? Is that a fair assessment? Yeah. It's pretty. It's nice. pretty. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Fellas, I'm wow. sorry for derailing your stuff. It's my oh, fault. No, no, no problem. No problem. No problem. It's all about having conversations and getting introduced to new things. So no, that's, 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 now I've added Larry Niven to my Amazon uh, follow list so I can start looking at some of his uh, stuff now. Be ring, careful. Ring you world. Will, yeah, ring world. Yeah. Ring world. Ring world. Engineers. Um, neutron star. You, you're going to start down that path. It's a it's a treacherous path, so be careful. It's a treacherous path. <laughs> you, you look by Larry Niven going, why did I buy all of these? Wow. <laughs> okay. Cool. All right. Well, so Darth Bane at that point, he Yeah, sorry, Darth Bane. Yes, yes. Darth Let's Bane. get back to Darth Bane. So we call this our window of opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's great. <laughs> we I'm gonna I'm gonna derail it once again. We <laughs> Yes. Zig and I gamed RPGs for years, years and years and years. And we would have four, five, six hour gaming sessions wow. um, on a Sunday night. And, 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 and during that time, it would always devolve into different conversations about different things. And then whenever somebody was really was like, okay, we need to get back to the game. It was like, okay, here's your window of opportunity. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I'm going to take the window of opportunity and swing back to Darth Bane. And Darth Bane so we can get to Jeff's side of the, of, of the house. Um, anyway. So at this point, Darth Bane has pretty much uh, destroyed the entire Sith uh, uh, Academy. There is no longer Academy, and he is embracing uh, Darth Revan's rule of two, which is what we experienced during the the Star Wars trilogy um, or trilogies Trilogies. (laughs) right now. (laughs) Of course, I, I think it could be argued whether whether Palpatine really follows the rule of two, because he always seems to have. Uh, Sith apprentices, you know, just kind of roaming around everywhere. So that's yeah, just good. He has one in reserve, right? 
<laughs> that's right. That's just good leadership strategic planning management. Just because, you know, he sends them out. So just in case they get killed, ah, I got another one. Here we go. Yeah, uh, he wasn't any good. He died. I got to get another one. <laughs> right. <That's> right. True. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> anyway, so, so yeah, that's where the rule of the rule of two comes into play. And then um, we'll get more into the Zana side of, of the story because that's Darth uh, Darth Bane's uh, uh, apprentice. We'll get more onto that on you guys' episode. So um, anything else you guys want to add to Darth Bane? Um, one of the things that, that I found was really cool about Darth Bane was his um, his orbalisk armor. Oh yeah, I forgot to even mention that. Yeah. yeah, the the living armor of the the parasitic beetles that just attach to him. <coughs> Dune. Him. <coughs> Sorry. Do what? Dune. 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 <laughs> well, except except Dune. Dune, Dune but better. <laughs> yes, exactly. These caused him incredible. Much more better. Much cheers. more better. Cheers. We hey, we got it in. Right on. Um, but it caused him constant, constant, excruciating pain. Yes. Which yes. which fueled his anger in the dark side. Huh, interesting. You know, I remember when I first read the novel way back when, when it came out, I didn't know how I felt about the whole, you know, living armor thing. I wasn't sure I really liked it. But re-listening to it last week, and I think maybe it, listening to it helped. Um, and, and just the way it's described through, through, you know, through, through the, uh, through the audio book, mm-hmm. I think that helped me to see it in my mind's eye and get a better picture of it and get a better grasp on it. And I enjoyed it much, much more better, much more better. Uh, cheers. Uh, cheers. Much more better, much more better this time around. So, well, yeah, not- thank you for mentioning it. I forgot all about that. Yeah, because it increased his strength. It, it it enabled him to heal almost instantly from any wound, and it was impenetrable to lightsabers. Yeah, yeah. So was it like Mandalorian armor then, or he became the Kwisatz Haderach? Ah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I the the Shah <laughs> I, I, I would say Drew Karpesh took took the uh, whole Dune idea to a much better level. So, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not a fan of Dune. <laughs> really? Yeah. I, I wasn't of the movies. They were just, it was too slow for me. Oh my gosh. You know, and, and, I, and, and, I, pace. and I did my high school term theme over Dune. And it, it just the movies, I struggle with the movies. Yeah, no, you talk about right both here. the Lynch yeah. version and the new version, the yeah. Villa de la Neuf. Yeah, I never can say I'm right his name there right. with you, Jeff, because we did it for for the podcast. Yep. Um, sorry, Stephen. I know you like dude. <laughs> I, I'm and, with you, Stephen. I thought they were. Off. I like the Lynch version. I like the new version. I like the one that Sci Fi Channel did. Isn't it nice that they're on that side and yeah. liked it? And we're on this <laughs> side. <laughs> 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 they replanned this. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Zig Zig does lots of stuff that I don't like. I mean, we've got an episode (laughs) coming up about the East Bay metal stupid thrash three. I I don't I don't mind heavy metal. Death metal? No. No. I'm out. I'm out. (laughs) We came to the consensus that if you're gonna scream, don't do it off key. And if you're gonna sing off key, don't scream. Yes, that made it even worse. I loved how you guys started off your episode with uh, big, big, uh, big trouble in Little China when Zig's doing the whole line. Uh, <laughs> <Evan Roadblock. laughs> and Sorry, and then Jeff, I don't know what the f we're talking about. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's a different intro for him. I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> you guys did good on that one. Thank you. I was laughing at. I think Brenda was like, uh, I don't know what the hell's going on here. (laughs) (laughs) I think they're funny when we just come into the middle of a conversation. (laughs) Speaking of Brenda. Hey, Brenda. How you doing? She says, says, I wish I could be there listening, but I'm at work. (laughs) 
So she's at work on Facebook. <laughs> oh, busted. <laughs> we won't tell anyone enough. All right. All right. So if no one's got anything else to say about Darth Bane, I think we'll step over to the murdery side of the house. I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> you want to do the other part? Huh? You want to do the other part? Sure. Murder. There you go. You know what that comes from, right? No, I don't. Heart to heart. Oh, really? The oh, old heart. Okay. The old when, heart to heart. When wow. they met, it was murder. Murder. That's right. Nice. Oh my goodness. I, I love Ooh, this inside lane. information on nerdery murder. Yep. My mom so used awesome. to love to watch Heart to Heart. I watched it too. I loved it. I loved it. Well, awesome. So for this, for the crossover, what I decided to do is I decided to find murderers from the states that Michael and Steven reside <laughs> in. I you love know, it. So you could be perfectly creeped out. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, Jeff, I, I want you to know, I actually live in Illinois. Right. Yeah. But, but I, I, got I associate with St. Louis and St. Yeah. Louis is actually located in Missouri. So you course, basically I, live. In I work Cahokia. in Missouri, too. Right? What was that, Jeff? You live in Cahokia, basically, or where Cahokia would have been. I live not far from Cahokia, actually, just down the street. So, yeah, it's a, the <laughs> biggest city in North America and no one knows about it. Well, I mean, we, you know, we do now. But... <laughs> awesome. Sorry. Yeah. St. Louis will be part two for this one. We're starting in Montana. And I got my information from all that's interesting, Wikipedia, ABC, Fox, Montana, and Happy Scribe. And this is the story of the Missoula Mauler. Ooh. The Missoula Mauler. Stephen, are you familiar with it? No. Ooh, okay. So the Missoula Mauler, Montana's babyface killer, was a serial sex murderer. And they all refer to one man, Wayne Nathan Nance. Wayne Nathan Nance. Um, he's believed to kill to have killed at least six people between 1974 and 1986. And Wayne Nance only stopped his reign of terror when he was fatally shot by a would-be victim. Uh, Wayne Nance shot and stabbed his victims, often raping them beforehand. Oh, by the way, the, some of this does get graphic. <laughs> yes, we, we are now moving in from... PG 13 plus. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's okay. Too. That's okay. Uh, between 1974 and 1986, he invaded homes across Montana, slipping out of the shadows long enough to take someone's life, only to quickly escape into the night. Eventually, it wasn't the police who ended his six victim crime, scene, crime spree, but a heroic couple Nance failed to kill. Uh, strongly suspected he may have had many more undiscovered victims. And his last crime was the invasion of his boss's home. Uh, although Nance plunged an eight inch blade into the man's chest, beat him over the head and raped his wife. The man managed to survive and shoot Nance dead. Good for him. It was only then after taking a sample of Wayne Nance's DNA that police realized this was the previously unidentified Missoula Mauler they had been chasing all along. Before his death and discovery of his crime, some of his murders were tentatively ascribed to David Meerhofer, who was a native Montanan and military veteran. Uh, Meerhofer confessed to four murders and then killed himself in custody in 1974, but authorities believed he may have committed additional crimes. Wayne Nance was born on October 18, 1955 in Clinton, Montana, to George Edwin Nance, who was a long-haul truck driver, and Charlene May Nance, who was a waitress. Nance lived in a motorhome outside of Milltown, Montana, which is east of Missoula, and was described by teachers and classmates as an academically gifted yet eccentric individual who was also a juvenile delinquent. Friends claim that during his adolescence, Nance frequently boasted of worshiping the devil and even used a hot coat hanger to brand himself in satanic symbols. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Ouch. I know, right? You know, there's something called a tattoo artist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got to wear that forever. Might as well get somebody who's good at it. Right. 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 <laughs> 
Now, this is a little rough. One winter morning, Wayne wandered through his trailer park to the community incinerator where everyone burned their trash. Near the incinerator was a box of a, a box with a litter of kittens that someone left behind. Wayne tipped the box into the incinerator and turned it on, listening to the kittens screamed as they burned to death. Uh, animal mutilation. Animal mutilation. Um, yeah, he yeah. was a psycho right there. Yep. The sad thing about that, e- even worse, is a neighbor witnessed the event but didn't tell Wayne's parents. Instead, he told his wife, who simply said, maybe boys do that, but maybe he had a statistic streak. Oh, well. Well, some people say cats should play out in the street where they belong. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm teasing. Well, I have two wow. cats myself. <laughs> well, I, I, I personally believe cats are evil. So, I mean, but I'm but, not a cat person either. I'm not going to run around and push them you? in the incinerator. So. No, no. Wait, aren't cats the gateway to hell? Wasn't that Constantine? <laughs> in the movie Constantine that they use cats to portal I to hell? Okay, right. never mind. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Go That's ahead, Jeff. Funny. I'm sorry. No, Squirrel. no worries. Window of opportunity. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, in December of 68, Wayne's father was arrested for armed robbery and assault. He held up a local super save store and tied up the assistant manager and beat him with the butt end of a pistol. Ouch. Records also show that Wayne got into so many fights with the other kids that he was forbidden to ride the bus to school. And he had also bragged about wanting to commit a murder before he was 19 years old. He graduated from Sentinel High School in 1974, and while the motives remain unclear, Wayne Nance committed his first murder at 18 years old. It was on April 11, 1974, he invaded the home of Harvey Pounds while the Bethel Baptist Church deacon was at work. Tragically, his wife Donna was home alone. Donna, who worked part-time at a Christian bookstore, had arrived home at 3.30 p.m. and is believed to have encountered Nance in the master bedroom. And as a regular visitor and family friend, Wayne Nance knew where Pounds' 22 caliber Luger was. He snuck into the bedroom and retrieved the gun, then tied Donna up and raped her at gunpoint. Oh, he was wearing latex gloves, one of which was found at the scene and carried with him in a, in a black gym bag where he had a white clothesline, which was used to tie Donna to the bed. And he then led her into the basement and fired five bullets into her head. Ouch. Whoa. He then inserted the barrel of the gun into her vagina and left the property. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Whoa, he's messed up. Yeah. Dang. (laughs) Donna's husband, Harvey, arrived home at 6 p.m. and discovered that Donna had been held captive in her basement, tied to a chair and shot. Three eyewitnesses claimed they saw Nance, an acquaintance of the victim's teenage son, who was in the area about the time of Donna's death that afternoon. One witness claimed they saw him in the garden of the Pounds' residence, and another said they saw him leaving the house with a black gym bag and heading in the direction of Tamarack Trailer Park, where Nance lived with his parents. Police also found bloody underwear in the home, but they couldn't identify where it came from as it had been washed. And suddenly Harvey Pounds himself became a suspect in his own wife's murder with suspicion that was compounded by the fact that he was in the middle of an affair. Oh. Oh. Well. Yeah, that's good. When questioned by police, Nance admitted that he had not gone to school that day, but had stayed home in order to work on a school project. He had been out in the area, he said, foraging for materials that he needed. But insufficient evidence against either party ultimately turned the murder into a cold case, and thus the Missoula Mauler's reign of terror began. Years It would be years later when police searched Nance's home that they discovered the evidence linking him to the Pound's murder. Oh, um, Nance served in the U.S. Mil- uh, Navy from 1974 to 77, and investigators Hopefully later. 70s were terrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, every yeah. single one of these stories. You know, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They found it like in the 85. It was fine. It was like, oh, because right in the 70s. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, investigators later suspected he might have committed more crimes while traveling for his military service. And on November 29th, 1977, Nance received a general military discharge on the ground of misconduct after he was found with stolen items uh, containing LSD, marijuana, and illegal butterfly knives. Wow. Over five years later, the body of a raped and stabbed teenage girl was found near Beavertail Hill State Park. 
On February 27, 1980, her badly decomposed body was discovered by the crew of a slow-moving freight train on the on a road bank close to Interstate 90 in the city of Missoula, resting against a chain-link fence. Because of the condition of her body, her remains were not identified until February 16, 1985. She had no shoes or underwear, and her dress was hitched up around her neck, and she had been stabbed in the chest. She matched no missing persons report, however, and was thus dubbed Betty Beavertail until 1985 when she was identified as 15-year-old Seattle runaway De- Devonna Nelson. Wayne is suspected of killing Nelson, but has never been definitively linked to the crime. In 1984, Nance was working as a bouncer at Missoula's Cabin Bar, and he was also dating a 16-year-old drifter named Marcella Bachman, who also went by Robin. She had run away from Vancouver, Washington, due to a conflict with her family with her family members, and the couple announced they would leave town in September to start anew somewhere else. Three months after they did, Robin's body was found in the Missoula woods. The body had been buried in a shallow grave, and her decomposed leg was protruding out of the frozen ground. Strong evidence indicates that Nance murdered Bachman. When asked by acquaintances about the the whereabouts of Robin, Nance would say she's gone and claim she had run off with a trucker or that he had put her on a bus. Bachman's grave was two miles from Nance's home. Uh, Nance claimed that he that she had left the area on September 28, 1984, which was about the time she was killed. Her brother Derek Bachman had been searching for Marcella since he was twenty since he was twenty one years old, along with a private investigator. And he originally believed she may have supported herself as a prostitute while away from home and may have become a victim of Gary Ridgway. We covered Gary Ridgway in a previous episode where he murdered at least 49 runaway children and prostitutes uh, during the 80s and 90s. Yes. Um, Robin was never identified as one of Ridgway's victims, though. Uh, when police conducted a search of, uh, of Wayne's home after his death, they found a series of photo booth pictures of him and Bachman. And investigators also found hair similar to Bachman's in Nance's home. The pathologist could only tell that she had died of three gunshot wounds to the head, but she had been decomposing for about three months. Dubbed Debbie Deer Creek after the crime scene, she was only identified as Bachman by DNA tests in 2006. Whoa, so 20 years later. You know, DNA technology. Yeah. Mm, Jeez. On September 11th, 1985, uh, the skeleton of Janet Lee Lucas, who was 23 years old, was found in Missoula, along with two 32 caliber bullets in her skull, three miles away from where Bachman had been found. Investigators believe she had died between 1983 and 1985, and Lucas's remains went identified until May of 1921, and she was initially believed of Asian, uh, Asian descent. Like other Jane Doe's found near East Missoula, Lucas was given a name before she was identified, and they called her Christy Crystal Creek. Based on examination, her age range was between 18 and 35 years old. She was between 4 foot 10 and 5 feet 2 inches tall and weighed between 90 and 110 pounds. Um, Examination indicated that she most likely had a history of smoking and had many fillings in her teeth as well as two root canals. She also had oral surgery that used characteristically Asian dental techniques involving a screw, the screwing of a dental post into the tooth. After genetic genealogy research was conducted after a successful DNA extraction, it was learned that Lucas originated from Spokane, Washington, having disappeared from Sandpoint, Idaho during the summer of 1983, but it's unknown when or why she came to Montana. Again, Nance has never been definitively linked to this murder, but he's the only suspect. On December 12th, Nance returned to his home invasions. Mike and Teresa Shook had just eaten dinner with their three small children when Nance banged on the door. Nance, armed with a gun, walked in the household at 9 p.m. and introduced himself as Conan the Barbarian. (laughs) He demanded their money and fired off a shot, which hit Teresa in the leg. A post-mortem examination uh, revealed that Nance tried to dig the bullet out of her leg. This led to the belief that Nance had not intended to hit Teresa and was aiming instead to fire a warning shot. But after shooting Teresa, Nance ordered and locked Michael and Teresa's four children in their shared bedroom. A physical altercation ensued in which Michael suffered a blow to the head. He was then tied up and stabbed in the chest with a butcher knife. 
Teresa was forced upstairs and tied to the bed, and she was raped before being stabbed to death herself. Her body would be found clothed, apart from her underwear, with a pillow over her face. Two hours later, Nance returned, robbing the family of an elk statue, a stag-handled hunting knife, and a silver dollar collection before attempting to set fire to the home. The fire smoldered but did not catch, however, and the intended ignition material released cyanide gas into the airtight home, slowly gassing the children trapped inside. The children did survive, however, after they were rescued by neighbors. And items stolen from the Shook residence were later found in the Nance's home, and it was also determined that Nance had delivered a new couch to Mike and Teresa Shook at their house only days before their murders. So that's how he knew them in that mm-hmm. case. Yep. Uh, uh, even though even though authorities found the children alive, there was no trace of Wayne Nance or anything linking him to the uh, the invasion. Nance soon had a job at Conlon's Furniture, hiding in plain sight. He was decent looking and could have drifted into obscurity if he hadn't soon returned to his violent ways. Uh, Missoula County Sheriff's Office. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You said Conlon's Furniture. That's where Uh we got some of our furniture. Oh, really? Really? Wow. Yeah. I mean, they've got stores all over Montana and stuff, but I'm like, huh. (laughs) <laughs> Obviously, there's not a good uh, delivery uh, screening <laughs> kind of a thing. Wow. I'm, not, I'm not getting furniture delivered ever again. <laughs> <laughs> well, this this would be a good reason when you sell furniture to make sure that you uh, meet at a neutral location and not right, right, right. Not your exactly. home. Uh, Missoula County Sheriff's Office Detective Marta Timmons said he, he, like many serial killers, was very charming. Uh, when he turned on the charm, he was handsome and he wasn't bad to look at. Oh, is that uh, thus the baby face? Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, um, so he worked as a mover for Conlon's Furniture, uh, where he was described by his employers and coworkers as an average guy. However, several female customers had complained about harassing phone calls they'd begun to receive after getting a delivery from the store and singled out Nance as being the caller. He'd also begun taking photos of his female colleagues. Uh, Wayne was reported for using a peephole, which he had, which he had quote found, and he had blamed on other members of the staff. And when questioned, these employees insisted they had been shown, it had been shown to them by Nance, not the other way around. Unfortunately for Wayne Nance, he was enamored with Chris Wells, who was the wife of his manager, Doug Wells. On September 3rd, 1986, Nance attempted to murder the husband and wife. Nance engaged Doug in a conversation while they were in the front yard of his home around midnight. Doug demanded to know what Nance was doing in the bushes outside of his property, upon which Nance told him he was passing by and had spotted someone lurking outside of his house. Nance asked if he could borrow a flashlight, and after Doug went and and afterward Doug went with him inside. Nance then stuck struck Doug in the head before tra- tying up both him and Chris. Nance stabbed Doug in the chest and left him to die in the basement, and then he forced Chris into the bedroom on the second floor to rape her. But Doug, even though he was badly wounded, managed to free himself and load one bullet into a rifle he had been repairing. He staggered up to the second floor where his wife was being assaulted in their bedroom. Nance and Doug engaged in another fight, ending with Doug shooting and incapacitating Nance. Uh, Both Nance and and the Wells were rushed to the hospital where Doug and Chris made full recoveries. But Nance's injuries proved fatal, and he died the following day. After the incident with the Wells, authorities investigated Nance's background and his other crimes, initially noting similarities between the Wells uh, incident and the murders of Michael and Teresa Shook. Uh, and Nance was also found to be in possession of a large collection of photographs of Chris and his wallet. Huh. Some had been taken from the bushes along the route Chris would go from a jog, and others he had collated into a photo album along with notes such as, I love you, I'm crazy about you, and I want you to live with me. In the end, Wayne Nance's death allowed for authorities, uh, only allowed uh, authorities to link him to his crimes. In May 2021, modern DNA also helped identify Christy Crystal Creek as 23-year-old Janet Lee Lucas. And it remains unclear if Nance actually killed her or how many other the Missoula Mauler victimized, which we may find out through DNA. And that's the story of the Missoula Mauler. Wow. Wow. 
<clears throat> Thank you, sir. Oh, wait a minute, Stephen. It's wow. Wow. <laughs> Well, thank, thank you for that. Thanks for taking that journey with me. Yep. Wow. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So what what I've learned about uh, through mm -hmm. this is um, always be aware of your surroundings. One. Yep. And two, good home defense. <laughs> yes. Always Three, have a never buy your furniture from Conlon's Furniture. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. That's fair. Yeah, Con yeah, Conlon's, if you want to be a sponsor. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> we'll work well, something out. Yeah, hopefully they're not listening to this episode. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for that, Jeff. That, that awesome. was That was cool. That was cool. I mean, not. Yes. Right. <laughs> I never know what to say at the end of these. Right. I know my, how you feel. <laughs> my stories are rarely happy. Right. <laughs> well, we can look at it this way. The the killers got it in the end. So yes. I mean, that's, that's yes. a happy thing. So yes. um, it's not happy what happened to the victims or anything, but you know. But you know, if you see a kid uh, a young kid who's who's uh harming animals, report them. Oh, yes, yeah. they don't yeah. stop that kid. That kid's going to become a serial killer. That's what yeah. we've seen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like in every one of your stories, the 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 killer he he's harmed animals, um, abused. He's abused. Um, and generally, what's the bed? Uh, yeah, pass way past the time when it when it should be, and that leads um, to humiliation. And it's called the McDonald Triad. Right. Right. Yeah. I remember generally petty criminals too. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, I don't have much more to add to that. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. So I'm curious. The McDonald Triad. It, uh -huh. So it's a theory, or what? What's the? Yeah, it's a theory that that all serial killers, or the majority of serial killers, have three things in common. Uh, and I'm sorry, not necessarily bedwetting. It's it's uh, physical abuse. Okay. Um. Humiliation, harming, harming of animals, okay, um, and setting fires. Mm -hmm. uh, so the the bedwetting generally comes into abuse because it'll end up being humiliation because they end up uh, wetting their bed uh, well past the age of when that is considered relatively normal. Still, okay, um, uh -huh. and so it will lead into humiliation and sometimes abuse there as well. So it's not a proven theory, but it's a it's a it's a theory that's out there. Interesting. Good guideline. Mm. The biggest the biggest one that we come to is if you don't want to raise your your kid to be a serial killer, don't, don't beat, your, beat kids. your kids. Right. <laughs> I think that's a good rule in general. So. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> wow okay fascinating that's i always learn something from you guys this is awesome. fascinating yeah awesome all right i like, get, like i like getting into the psychology of it yeah very interesting see i'm also i'm doing my uh what's the word i'm doing my uh uh research here at the same time so <laughs> i have multiple oh, screens so i'm sitting here looking at pictures of uh, of Wayne Nathan Lance and and uh, some of the old pictures from the se late seventies, early eighties, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then and then and then I looked up McDonald Triad. What? Yep, yep talked about it many times. <laughs> McDonald Triad. Very interesting. So everybody, you want more info? Be sure I'm gonna I'm gonna put this on the screen because I want everyone to to know where to find you guys because this is a great time to plug. Awesome. Where to find our friends? Yes. Nerderyandmurdery.com. That's that's the hub for our friends, uh, Jeff and Zig, and uh, please check them out. They are a lot of fun, and uh, you're gonna learn something new every time. Yes. Yes. It may be about circuitry for a Commodore computer, but right, it also may right. be about a punk rock band that you've never heard of. Right. <laughs> you know. Or even authors like Larry Niven. There right. There we go. Uh, there he is. Well, this guy teaches about murder. All right. Yeah, there you go. 
Sorry, I switched everything around when I accidentally popped out. So. <laughs> no worries. It's all good. All um, good. Yeah, Jeff and Zig have been friends of ours for I don't know what we've two, two years, years yeah. a couple of years now, and years Mike now. Mike and I started watching Cowboys games together. So yep, yep. <laughs> Just about every Sunday, we're, we're Facebook messaging each other as the Cowboys start to play because yep. I'm I'm a diehard Cowboys fan. I might be late tomorrow. I'm, we're we're probably going to go golfing in the morning. So nice, understandable, understandable. Nice. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we got a win tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> it all depends on which of our cowboys show up. The, I know, the right? winning ones or the losing ones. Because right. <laughs> each week it seems to be a different story. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So at, le- at least it's it's well somewhat entertaining. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> there may be tears. There may be cheers. We'll see what happens. Yep. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all I got. How about you, Stephen? I'm still st- I'm stuck on so many different things that we've <laughs> talked about today. I mean, I'm still geeking out about Keanu Reeves would make a great Darth Revit. I agree yes. with that. Yeah. Yes. And uh, yeah, and and it's and it's Revan. I said in the show Bane, but the rumor is that he's gonna be Darth Revan. You know, I'd take him as either Revan or Bane. Yeah, I, either just, one. Yeah, I don't care. It's Keanu Reeves. Who cares? Which, just get him in there. <laughs> right. You know, also, just a side note, um, I'm also still looking at Larry Niven. <laughs> so, oh, no. Inferno, oh, he, you'll love him. He was stuff. a long and prolific author. <laughs> Is he? So, the funny thing about Dante's Inferno, most people who think of hell or talk about hell and stuff, they get their theology not from the Bible, but actually from Dante's Inferno. Yeah, which oh, is yeah. so funny. Well, yeah, when people talk about it, it's like, yeah, that that's that's Dante. That's not what's in the Bible. <laughs> uh, well, oh, people, uh, people pull other things for you know that they think is in the Bible. It's not too so. So, so real quick though, I, I want to ask this question. So, of the Larry Niven books. Which one should I start off with if I'm going to read one? Ring World. Good question. Ring Ooh, World. did you Ring catch World. that? Boom. Ring World. Ring World. Yeah. Ring World. Okay. And then after that, go with the Protector because it will, it, Ring World will make more sense once you read the Protector because mm-hmm. you realize the Protectors are the ones that built Ring World. But they don't say that in Ring World. Oh, spoiler alert. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh my God. The 60s. Jeff warns you that he spoils everything. He does. He does. <laughs> this guy. That's oh awesome. My gosh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, if you guys have not checked out Nerdery and Murdery, please make sure and go check out their, their show. Um, you can find them at nerderyandmurdery.com. And, uh, uh, Zig always has a interesting topic on the nerd side, and Jeff will always have a uh, a mesmerizing murder for you. I try. Uh, by the way, if you go back, I had to go back and look here. Episode forty five of our show was over Larry Niven. Ah. Okay, thank you. All right, perfect. I so, am. I'm going to my Spotify. That's how I listen is through Spotify. So I'm going to make sure I add that real quick. Yeah, the the murdery side of that one's real interesting too. That was a, a disappearance that's never been solved. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. So we don't actually know if it was a murder or not. No, la- lady that disappeared off a cruise ship. Oh wow. Okay. Very interesting story. Wow. Okay. All right. So make sure and check that out. This, by the way, is part one of a two part crossover. So to get the second part where we will be discussing. Uh, Darth Bane's Apprentice Zena, um, and Zig will be leading us on that one. You'll have to check that out over on Nerdery and Murdery. Yeah, hoping to have that out on Wednesday. And this episode, the audio episode, will be available Monday, and of course, the YouTube is available now. So, <clears throat> all right, Stephen. Yes, you're on. 
you. I'm on. Hey, everybody, please check us out at our website at twogeeksmike.com. That's the number two, G-E-E-K-S-M-I-C dot com. That's all things uh, Hub Two Geeks. But one of the cool things that you can check out there is you can check out our website, or excuse me, check out our Kofi page where you can help support us. All that money, as I always say, goes to pay for Mike's addictions to comic books, figures uh it's lamborghini no, just, yeah lamborghini <laughs> the lamborghini yeah i thought i'd do something different but yeah lamborghini <laughs> now they've adopted the lamborghini thing on their side so right <laughs> well i also started yeah, saying, I do listen to you guys <laughs> and i also started saying and it helps to go fund the vacations that we don't take <laughs> right <laughs> vacations i got a full-time job besides this right yeah. right, right. <laughs> Also, you can check us out at our new uh, uh, website link, which is two geeksmikemerch.com. So the number two, G E E K S M I C M E R C H.com. I got my two geeks hoodie on, which is super soft as well. And, uh, but also you can get there from our website, two geeksmike.com. And, um, Pretty cool stuff. Also, everybody, make sure you uh, check us out um, because we've got all kinds of new stuff coming and very excited about what lay ahead for us. And we have a new sponsorship, but I'm still affiliate sponsorship, but I'm still working on the paperwork. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, did we get it? No, I'm working on it. I'll get it. We'll we'll get it. We'll get it. But we're pretty excited about it. So we'll have more on that coming soon. All right. All right. Um, so with that said, if you've uh, watched us this far, please make sure and like and subscribe. Go uh, like us on Facebook. We've actually gotten a lot of extra um, likes on Facebook, so I appreciate uh, awesome. all the new people on there. Um, give the little bell a tickle on YouTube so you know uh, exactly when we go live. And we do go live on Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. You do the math on the rest because I don't like math. <laughs> um, and with that said, I don't have anything else. How about you, Stephen? I'm good. All I'm right. Well, part two, everybody. Nerdery and Murdy, part, part two. two. It's going to be Definitely awesome. Go check out part two. And I'm looking for my outro here. Okay. Um, Jeff and Zig, thank you so much for being on our show. We Thanks love having us. you guys. You, you're, you're such a blast. So with that said, um, over and out. May the force be with you and Zig. Cue the music. Thank you for joining us today on the Two Geeks and a Microphone podcast. Tune in next week when we will have more news and reviews. Until then, may the force be with you. I'm going to go to the next one.